Hello and welcome to Language Graph for episode 11 of Let's Time Lapse. Now let's dive right in. On the right you can see a brand new house, which comes right across from one of the very first houses that was built in the village. And up top the roofs are so close that they actually join up, which looks amazing in my opinion. Even though it's one of the main streets of the village, we have the impression of being in a small alleyway. And that medieval feel is what was really missing. Now the last episode made up for all this, with the square, and the more we progress, the closer the houses grow, and the more dilapidated they get. I think it's really interesting for the style to evolve, and get closer and closer to a medieval style. But on to the main subject of today's episode. You will remember that during episode 8, we built the base of the church, the whole first story, with pillars that were left partly built. The village had other priorities for a time, but now it's back to the church. Now let's not forget that at the time, the church had the most money. So the clergy has therefore pushed to come back to the church, and all the scaffolding has been taken down, and the first step is to finish the whole inside of the structure. We'll then make a layout of the church, which is always extremely useful for this kind of building, especially because there's a lot of repetition. It allows us to know exactly where we're going, because building blind is fun, but this is also a great technique to plan things out. And as with everything, it's a question of finding the right balance between too much preparation and just freedom, going nuts. Uh, to be honest, in this case we might have overprepared, but that's maybe better than not preparing enough. So the two towers at the front had already been started on the very first level. We'll follow the same pattern for the following stories. The only change is the center of the module, more specifically the windows, and their number. You'll see that we played around a lot with these towers. We were never sure how high we wanted them to go. Um, so these are the only world edit um, exceptions that we allowed ourselves. Because even though we do it when we are not recording, um, I want to stay in the time-lapse state of mind. And during a time-lapse, you can't copy and paste anything if you want it to look smooth. So try to keep an eye out, you may see the height of the towers vary from shot to shot. So to the right we have a traditional bell tower, with wooden beams hiding the bell. Now the actual bell was uh, sort of forgotten. Uh, we'll come up with a design in the future, but it's a bit hard. We don't have much space, so we'll have to polish something up. To the left we have the spire. Its function, apparently, is to reach up to the skies and point towards God. Now again, we played around with the shape a lot. We hadn't prepared, which was refreshing to be honest with this build, and we kept changing the shape to make it as streamlined as possible. Between each section, the spire went in by one block on all sides, and each section was just a tad taller than the previous one. However, we won't even mention the roof that I'm working on on the right, since it was very bad, and I started over from scratch at the end of the shot. Now that the towers are done, it's time to start on the actual body of the church, the second story with these big windows. Now a few years ago I read a book called Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. It's a great historical novel that talks about the building of a cathedral. It's based on an actual cathedral, actually probably Wells and Salisbury in England, and it's particularly interesting because it takes place when cathedrals went from being low, stocky buildings to much higher, grander, and lighter uh, buildings thanks to huge improvements in technology and techniques. With the right columns and weight distribution, both structures would be just as solid. And in the case of our church, if you count the number of blocks, the windows on these uh, walls actually represent half of the blocks of the wall but it still looks sound. Now this change uh, also contributes to dating the village we are building. It confirms that we are around uh, 1300, maybe 1400. Now of course, to continue the work that we started together, Teofilo is with me again, I forgot to mention it at the beginning. Um, a huge thank you to him. We make a great team, I find, and had a really fun time building together, always making jokes and knowing the right balance between taking things seriously and not too much. And as with Micromega, the end result is something we could not have done separately. And again, that's, that's really important about teamwork. 
but at the same time, I find that the facade of the church might be a bit too detailed. Now, a lot of people like simple buildings, and this is anything but that. It's really nice from afar, but not so much when you're close up. So, quite the feat, since it's only three blocks deep, but there's just too much relief. Uh, even I say that, and I built the damn thing. So we can get away with it only because it's the church. It's supposed to be one of the grandest buildings. Anyway, this is how I consider you should build. A good principle to apply to make sure you always make progress is that, as you can see, we build, we destroy, we rebuild, we always try to improve. In the example of the roof, you can see it was pushed back several times, one block at a time, and we always strive to do better. Um, I find, generally speaking, you should really never be happy with your very first try. The back of the church, the choir, was quite hard because it's extremely high, but it's not very wide, so we don't have a lot of room to work with. It worked out, but you'll see that the roof at the very top is a bit strange. I mean, try to make a smooth slope with only about five blocks to work with. For the rest, it's fairly straightforward. We can use the general patterns of the church. And now we have the perfect angle to talk about the width of the church. If there is one thing I would change about the building, it's the width of the nave. Just widening it by two blocks would make a world of difference. You'll see that even more when we go inside. I think it's only about seven blocks wide, which is really not enough, especially with the seats. But no world edit, that's my own rule. Now here's something that we wanted to change, among other things, thanks to all your comments. We had built these buttresses in guess the first story, since that was all that had been built at the time. But we decided to change them. It's not architecturally accurate, and to be honest, it doesn't look that nice. The curve was practically the only round element in the church. So we changed them to reach to the top of the church and are stuck to the whole first story. This is much better and improves the general aesthetics. So that's uh, closer to what is called flying buttresses, which thankfully is historically accurate. Inside, you can see what I meant when I said it was too narrow. A path three wide and only two wide for seats on each side. We use sandstone for the ceiling, which is a nice change of color. The rest of the building being almost exclusively stone brick and some cobblestone. Now I spent a lot of time romping around in a church recently as a wedding photographer, and I was able to analyze the church from places that are usually not accessible. That's one of the reasons we had this um, sandstone ceiling. And of course we have archways at regular intervals to be as close to reality as possible. Last but not least, something that a lot of people asked for, but I wanted to build it after the rest of the church. The graveyard. The wall around it is the same style as the ones in the fields, except that they are more built up, they're more solid. Now to the right, Teofili is building the rectory, where the priest lives. It sits between the church, the graveyard, and the rest of the village, bringing all those worlds together. Around the alleyways, we decided to put a small pond and not give a proper organization to the graves, to keep the same feeling as the rest of the village. Now in truth, they should all be lined up and facing the choir, but this is one of those times when I am purposefully ignoring history to work in Minecraft. So here we are. This is what we see from the other end of the village. Look at how much the church sticks out above all the other buildings, especially the spire, which, if you look closely, has an extra module as compared to the bell tower. The church truly dominates the village, which was the desired effect. Now you will notice that I say church and not cathedral. A lot of you said that with that kind of size, it should be a cathedral. But from what I was told, size does not matter. <laughs> size is not what defines a building's denomination, but it's its function. A cathedral is the center of a diocese. This village is not the center of a diocese. Some cathedrals can actually be quite small. We have the opposite, a big church. I think it's more interesting to have a village with one or two specialties rather than knowing everything, being big in everything. 
And here we go back to the inside. It's, I guess it's fairly plain, uh, but I think it's quite nice. And at the back here we have the private area, where the priests can get together. We also have an organ, which was made along the same model as the one built for Lem Cathedral, one of our first team time lapses. If you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. Now this structure is really big. Teofilo and I were talking about it, and we thought it wasn't the biggest uh, we had ever built, you know, separately, but it might be with that level of detail. Of course, uh, we do have bigger structures that we've built, but those are all team projects. This is an individual one. Back to the front of the church with the huge towers. Now, there are two details, okay, but they give such an impression that I think we can let it slide. As you can see, I spent several hours breaking up the roofs to age it like the rest of the village. It may be a bit too much, a church has to be in good shape, but I find it's better than a roof that's too smooth. And anyway, it's such a big structure, who can maintain everything? Now something that we talked about in the previous episode was the name of the village. Now a huge number of people, in French and in English, suggested names. In total I got about 2,000 suggestions. A lot of very interesting names, but to be honest there were only a few that caught my attention. One name struck me for the name of the village, but I will only decide if I use it or not in a few episodes, because for the moment the series in English is less advanced than the one in French. I want to wait until we catch up. However, one name was chosen for the region, or the country, uh, to be determined. That name is Polardi. It sounds a bit French or Italian, but it works well in English, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, I need to find names for the river and the village, possibly the Lord. Now, quick note on the fact that the series is late on its schedule. A lot of people talked about that. Um, it's only up to episode 12 in French. Um, we're almost caught up with it. It started about six months later in English. So we've been able to churn out episodes quicker in English, but now we're catching up. So there won't be an episode every other week anymore. It'll probably be every three weeks, possibly more. Um, I'm sick. I'm going on vacation soon, so no promises, but that's time lapse stays my baby. So you'll keep getting videos as uh, soon as I can make them. Anyway, thank you for watching, and a big thank you to Teofil for his help. This is quite the church. Uh, we want something special to dominate the rest of the village. Um, I think we made it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.